Hi, my name is Janet Skinner. Sometimes in life we need a purpose to continue. And back in the early 1990s, I was looking for a reason to live, if you like. Um, just happened by accident one day that I saw that Jibung Station, which is in Queensland, was going to be demolished and replaced. So I decided to paint it. And during the 1990s, I painted 104 railway scenes and that kept me going. As I sat on the platform and railway sidings, old people would come over and speak to me and tell me about life in the good old days. These were elderly people. It transpired that many of them were born in the early 1900s. I wrote down their names and phone numbers and I went back and interviewed them. There's a series of some 35 railway tapes that I'm making of the interviews that I recorded in New South Wales and Queensland. I'm not a journalist. I've got no background training in interviewing. And I really hope you enjoy these films. Um, I hope they bring laughter to many and insight into as what life used to be like. And please bear with me. I had fun doing them and I hope you have fun listening to them. Thank you so much. Okay, we were just saying that you remember that the post office at Landsborough closed on the station between about 58 and 59. Yeah, okay. yeah. They brought the old post office up from Caboolture and put it where it was and then they shipped it around the railway and went into the old, the old post office that here came from Caboolture to here. Really? It was an old wooden building? An old wooden building, yeah. They built a new one at Caboolture and then they right. shipped the old one up to here. Right. Whereabouts was it in Caboolture? you know where it was there? Well, where the new post office is, I think. Where the new right. post office is built in Caboolture. Right. Okay, and whereabouts is it here? Um, it sits around Caloundra Street, but it's not being used as a post office now. It's only just been closed in the last 12 months and it's moved. the post office has moved into a new shopping centre. Right. Okay, that's interesting. All right, we'll just go through this list, just in the, in the memories of yeah. the different stations, and it all goes through the jigsaw puzzle with other people's parts of memories and yeah. stuff like that. So I've got, um, we did Bouval quite, quite a bit. Didn't yeah, we? you didn't know about Bouval, yeah. Okay, I've got Caboolture. Now, the painting that I've done of Caboolture is where the old station's been moved to the historical site. Sites, yeah. Um, I don't know anything of Caboolture at all. Well, the old station used to be, it had an air raid shelter like Lansborough. Um, the station was really virtually where the one is now. I'm just trying to think, was that used to come across from the hotel right into the back of the station, so that sort of gives me to think that the station was nearly on the same side as it is where the new building is now. Mm -hmm. And then there was a gap between the station building and then there was a signal cabin. Mm -hmm. And then there was an air raid shelter or a shed of mm -hmm. some sort up on the other side. We used to go and relieve at those places, but it was mainly always on the on the night shifts or afternoon shifts. Like we, I was on the relief staff and we used to have to, we poured into Roma Street at nine o'clock in the morning and then if anyone went off sick and at anywhere, we used to have to go and take their place. Well, mm. you know, you'd leave home at eight o'clock and you'd go into Brisbane, you might sit in Brisbane for two hours and end up up at Karoi for the afternoon shift at four o'clock. So you never had time to go home because mm. we used to have to travel everywhere by train. But Caboolture was a very busy job, like, that's all I can ever remember at Caboolture. You never had a chance to of course, it was the end of the double track onto the single track. You had the Wham your end, you had the Kilcoy branch was still there when I relieved there. The branch used to go right out to Kilcoy. And you were just busy because you had, to, you had to give all the information of all the trains to the control and everything that went through the place. And it was a very busy station for to operate. What sort of signal cabin was it? Was it a low down one or a high? Yeah, one? no, it was a. Oh, it was only, it wasn't very high off the ground. It was only a couple of steps up into the signal cabin, right. and it was a low one. All, all windows. Type all windows round the front of a chair, so you could see right. up the up the yard, 
Um, what year would you have been there, Donald? Oh, that would have been in 19... when I came back from Stanford, 1961, until I, before I went to Baval, because I was on the relief in Brisbane, and then I went to Baval in 1965, so it would have been in from 61 to 65, I would have... Mm. I relieved all up and down the, right. the coast here and up to, to Helen and those places, like, you know. Right. Well, what was actually Landsborough Town, uh, Caboolture Town like in those days? Well, well Caboolture Town was only a small town. <laughs> was it? It wasn't like it is now, like, you know, there was a couple of hotels. You had the one up on the corner. They had the... It was old shops. Um, it was... It was just starting, I suppose, at that time. It was just starting to grow because it didn't have, even have a real good passenger service. Because most of the trains used to terminate, the suburban trains used to terminate at Zulmere, then they got extended on to Petrie, and you'd have the odd train that goes through to Caboolture. Uh, and and then as it got busier and busier, it got a better train service, like as the area grew. But they were all all those little stations. You had um, Narangbar and uh, Burp and Gary, they were all manned by signalmen though, in those days because of the old signalling system. That's right. And they had the level crossing gates at Narangbar, so the bloke had to be there 24 hours a day, seven days a week to work the level crossing gates. I've interviewed a few people that lived years in a tent. Yeah. You know that? Just next to the, next to the, the yeah. crossing or by the signal coming, you know, two of them, one for the night shift, one for the day shift. Yeah, the tent. yeah well, I, we used to have to do that out of, we never lived in the tent though. This is not Caboolture, but we went to our, the other side of Ipswich at Carabin. There's a level crossing gates, and it used to be what they used to call a gatekeeper. It used to be a woman, and that was her job, was to look after the gate. She used to have to do it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And, of course, that wasn't a real busy road at those times. But when she went on holidays, they had to provide three porters to go and work the gates because we couldn't be paid for 24 hours a day, so we had to work eight-hour shifts. She had to do that all the time. And she had to do it all the time. That was her job. She was the gatekeeper. At, Good. At she the, must have had somebody to help her, though. Right? Oh, well, normally, a lot of the times, that was, uh, she was either the wife of the ganger right. the, or one of the fettlers, and they got the house for nothing on the condition that they... She got paid to, yeah. do, the, to do the gates, but, like, if you were paying her on an hourly rate, she'd, they'd be millionaires after they'd been there for a while, but they didn't get that sort of pay, right. like, you know. Got Okay, so um, how do you remember Caboolture Station? Was it an old wooden building? It was an old wooden building. There was an old tea room there, but I just can't... I think the tea room was down this end of the station, because that's what we were saying before. It was a non-licensed, it was only a temp, what is called temperance room, and they could only serve tea and soft drinks and cakes and yeah. pies and that. They couldn't serve any alcohol. And of course, the pub was just across the road, but then the pub was just across the road here too. But this was a two-hour break from Brisbane, so they, that's why they had the refreshment rooms here. Was it all paddocks around Caboolture then? Um, oh, there, yes, yeah. Well, there was the a station. few of us. There was, um, yeah. From there's a few old houses on fronting the station. When you look towards Bridie, that way, there's a few houses there. There was. Hardly, there was none of that industrial estate down towards the other area there. That was that wasn't there. It was all vacant land. Um, Did any produce used to come into Caboolture Station to go elsewhere? Or? Yeah, fruit. They, they used to have fruit, and um, oh, I like, I'm, I'm only just going on what some of the blows told me. But there used to be a fair few oyster leases down at um, mm. on the Bridey Passage, and they used to bring their oysters in and send them away by train, bags of oysters used to send them away by train. That was something I forgot to tell you about Lansborough. We used to load all the fish here. We used to come in from the fish market at Caloundra and send it to Brisbane to the old fish board at South Brisbane by oh, train. Really? Fish oh. and prawns. And so the oysters, were they t sent to Caboolture? They were brought into Caboolture and then they'd be sent to Brisbane to, to the markets in Brisbane or oh. whatever. Great. Well, that's OK, because we go back over the tapes and we join them all together and put bits in on the computer. Yeah, so. yeah. And Caboolture, also at that time, the caravan factory was at Caboolture, um, was it Glendale Caravans, or I think it was, or Marumba Stars they were, Marumba, and he'd started, and they were loading a hell, a hell of a lot of caravans, he'd start the big caravan factory at Caboolture, and they were, used to load a lot of caravans. How there. would you load a caravan onto a truck? Well, they used to have a, a loading ramp at Caboolture, 
opposite where the Catholic school is there at Caboolture now. They used to have a loading ramp and they used to load them onto flat wagons and you just push it up the loading ramp and just yeah. dangle it back onto the thing and then you had to tie it all down uh, with wire and chocks and everything so that they couldn't move. But they, he used to load a lot of caravans at uh, Caboolture and the big thing you had to watch with them is that they were out of gauge loaded because of the width and the height of them. You had to measure them and had to make sure they were sitting dead centre in the middle of the wagon so that they didn't fail any of the structures in the loading gauge. So that was always a job. You had to, you had to have sticks with things on them so you could measure that they didn't exceed the height off the rail and really? all that. Mm, and what about cattle? Was that loaded for Caboolture? Yeah, they used to have cattle yards at Caboolture. Um, but then they, they never got... They used to get cattle there for Kilcoy when they closed the Kilcoy uh, branch down, the cattle for the Kilcoy abattoir used to go through there, but they were, they were only uh, small yards, and with the development of Caboolture, as the development encroached all around the station and everything, and in the middle of the town, they they decided they wouldn't accept, they'd only accept small lots of cattle. They, like, they couldn't get train loads there, so we used to get them all here at Lansborough. Then they'd run the trucks over the back, over the Peachester Range to Kilcoy. Can you remember the Kilcoy um, rail stopping? Yeah, yeah, it used to be worked at the rail motor. I worked out of Woodford a couple of times on the branch. Yeah. Cold sort of a place that was in the winter. So when did the, when did the Kilcoy branch line, would have stopped at Caboolture then, would it? It used to come... Yeah, to well, it used to be a rail motor. It used to come from Brisbane to Caboolture yeah. uh, and then go out all the way to Kilcoy. Yeah. Used to go out at the afternoon and come back in in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You'd have a, a goods train every day. Used to go out to Kilcoy and come back because mm -hmm. at that time the, the big sawmill at Woodford used to, uh, we used to load sawn timber at Woodford at the sawmill to go way by, mm -hmm. go way by train. So when they closed the line to Kilcoy, was there a big fuss about it then? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, that was at the time they went through and they closed the whole heap of lines. About what year was that? Remember? That would have been about 1964, mm -hmm. I think Kilcoy got closed. Because yeah. they went through, um, they closed a the whole heap of lines, because the Gold Coast line, when we got married, 1962, and I had two blokes killed, I was down on the Gold Coast line, and we always reckon a good sign that a line's going to close is when they come through and do all the stations up and paint them and then they come through the next year and close them all down. <laughs> okay, um, Kuroi, did you spend any time there? Oh, I only relieved up there for a few, um, I, had, I suppose I would have had a couple of months up there at Kuroi. Mm -hmm. But it was very similar to here, Kuroi, because you were the, you were in the inland centre for the coastal resort like. Yes. You know, so it was similar to here, and Karoi was much the same. They used to load heaps of fish and seafood mm -hmm. uh, at Karoi, but also it was a busy fruit area. Mm -hmm. um, they used to load a heap, a hell of a lot of beans, for the markets through Karoi before mm -hmm. road transport got into them. We used to have a special, uh, what we used to call the bean wagons, and this be what we used to call the bean train. We used to come down from mm -hmm. Maryborough. And it used to uh, it was the fruit train, but we, you know, it was, it was called the bean train or the fruit train, and used to pick up all the fruit and get them down to Brisbane in time for the markets. And the so, how many wagon loads of beans? You oh, had sometimes it, when the season was gone, you'd send two or three big box wagons full of beans mm -hmm. away, like you know. And then gradually the road transport got into it, and then it was just one wagon, you know, a half a wagon. Um, and there was. Bananas growing around Karoi, uh, plus other fruit. There used to be a few pineapples growing around there. And, uh, it was very much a country town, isn't it? Oh, yeah, very rural town. Because I always remember the first time I went up there, I went, <laughs> I went over to get a hamburger from the Greek commonos at a cafe, I think it was commonos. I went over to get a hamburger and this guy gave me a Toasted bread run with a piece of ham in it, and that was my hamburger. Oh, <laughs> I'd hamburger. done it crude. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what a hamburger was. No, the, the, the daughter came out, the old fellow was in the shop, and she said, What's wrong? I said, I asked for a hamburger. I said, Well, I've got the toasted bun with a bit of ham in it. Oh, she said, Just a minute and I'll fix it up. 
Oh, dear. But, yeah. um, that was an old wooden station, I forgot. It was, was, yeah, it was an old wooden station. Yeah. Well, it was, the signal cabin was in one end of the station. The beauty of Karoi was that the signal cabin was attached. You just walked straight through from the office into the signal cabin. Then you had the waiting room and then you had the, the ladies' toilet on the end and the gents' toilet was up on the up on the platform a bit. But the signal, you could walk straight through from the yeah. office to the signal cabin, like, you know. That's it. It's got like a metal shutter door now where the signal cabin used to be in the painting. Oh, yeah. And off, oh, across the way from the uh, station building, there were like storage sheds, wasn't there? Yeah, well, the, the building be right behind the railway goods shed. You had the station, then you had the goods shed. And then there was RSL Club was on railway land, and that was right behind the railway goods shed. The Karoi RSL Club was on yeah. railway land, yeah. but it was um, it was a very busy station in those days because it was the same as here. Everything came to Karoi by train, and then went by a coordinated road carrier. Pardon me, down to uh, to Wanton Noosa, yes. and uh, mainly packed when you say goods and passengers too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You get. Um, Used to get a lot of passengers come because most of those, in the going back in the sixties, you always had the, you had the Bundaberg Mail, you had the Murrabra Mail, you had the Gympie Mail, the Murrabra Mail, the Bundaberg Mail, and the Rocky Mail, and the Sunland. Well, they all used to stop at these stations, like, and there was always people getting off and moving and that, you know. So it was a reasonably busy station. Uh, you know, just with normal trains, when we were working trains through with the safe working system, you're always busy going across. Yeah, what year was your career? I would have been there from 1962 to any time up till 1965. So it was a lot of steam trains when you were No, no steam no, trains, diesel. no, all diesel. The only few steam trains we used to have used to be on, on sometimes on the passengers. They used to work the BB-80 and the quarters, because when I used to work at Korean, the old, used to have the, what they used to call the pumper. He was a bloke, he used to have to come and light up the steam boiler to pump water into the logo tanks. We had two logo tanks at Korean. Mm -hmm. And at that time, that was just after we got married, wasn't it? I went to Korean and I stopped in the pub out at Kin Kin. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a friend, who was a school teacher, he was up there, so we both boarded at the pub. And they used, this bloke used to have to come and pump water three times a day, Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, so that the tank was full for a steam, yeah. but, but there wasn't a lot of steam engines, they were only very, no, so, yeah, okay. very few and far. At that time they were being used a lot around the suburban areas, the steam trains. Oh yes, well they were, they were still being used on the suburban trains, um, but well, they tried to dieselise the north coastline, the major, uh, you know, was only, you might have been on the Gympie shunt you without a steam train or a... What about in and out of Kavolchi when you were there, was that steam trains? Yeah, there were, were still teams of steam trains there. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, there's a water tank at Caboolture where they used to take water up the Gympie high, end, high yeah, big high tank, tank yeah, yeah. Gympie end of the platform. Right. They used to take water there. Let me just check this plate. Okay, Donnie. Um, did you spend any time at Deegan? No. No, no. Okay. Um, a little bit of time at Red Bank? Yeah, I did a. Um, yeah, that was later, that would have been in the uh between 62 and 65 at red bank i went up there and relieved up there because i used to live on a dock at dara so i used to have to go and relieve at all the most of those places mm -hmm. but red bank that was when the housing commission was just starting to develop red bank when uh at all those where red bank station where you look out now well all that area that was the housing commission just started to build all those houses there mm -hmm. the loco uh, the diesel the workshops were in full, well they weren't, um, they were only doing diesels here at the time, mm -hmm. and the coal trains. Yes, uh, yeah, somebody else told me about the coal trains. I was thinking there's a story that goes about the tiles on the roof at Red Bank. No, well, I, know it, I know it was a concrete building, it was uh, a certain type, Coranda is of the mm -hmm. same architecture. Yeah, it's the tiles at Red Bank apparently come as ballast in a ship from of the um, European countries. Ah, well, I've heard that story. Yeah. Indrapilly might have even had, the old station at Indrapilly might have even had the same thing, because okay. Indrapilly station was very similar right. to Red Bank station. The architecture and the style of building. Right. Yeah, that's gone now. Yeah. 
Mm. Well, I started off there as a lad porter in 1955. Is that where you started? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Fourth of April, 1955. Let's talk. I've got a little bit on Red Bank already. Let's.